So, okay, camera, sound, microphone, test, alright, well I've been trying now for about, I don't know how many uh, hours were spent over the last few days, attempting to go live, but it's just not going to happen, they just won't budge, so... That's okay, sometimes the Earth has large groups of evil people on it, and that's just a fact of reality. And that'll have to be dealt with with karma. So, what we're going to do is I'll just record this today. I'm going to talk about um, the variant wads that will be going along with this. Starhaven Balls of Plasma. I am today putting together some variant wads with uh, some of the players and some of the monsters and these little wads will all be available for free I'm gonna make them downloadable on mod database uh, or, or my DeviantArt as well <coughs> but today I thought I would document um, what we're doing this is an old PK3 called Doom Splitters underscore tomb and it is a doom wad based on the time splitters game loosely it's a fan art production. You can go look it up if you want. Um, it's on moddatabase.com. It's kind of silly and stupid, but I had a lot of fun making it, and I had a lot of fun playing it. And it was it was part of a um, practice for learning how to edit things and put them together. It was just all you know, a little fun project, like a school project. <laughs> but there were no teachers or classes. It was just me. So, um, I went back into this Doom Splitter's tomb. Oops. I'll, I'll blur that out. There's some personal stuff there. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna calm down. I'm, I need to calm down. I apologize, everybody. I apologize for my meltdown yesterday. That was bad. But, we all get to the pressure point sometimes when it just keeps going on and on. They just don't quit. What was I doing? Oh yeah. Here's my Doom Wads I have off saved offline. Most of these are uploaded somewhere, I hope, accessible to the public, I hope. It's my intention to make it globally accessible to any human being that wants these for free. That's my full intention. If there's large groups of very evil human beings who are standing in the way of that intention, well, there's going to be karma for that. But in the meantime, <laughs> it's a shame we have to keep um, acknowledging this, but you know, there is no live chat. You see, there's no live chat floating on my screen. That's a shame. I would have liked to have had interaction and communication with other people on these things, but that's all right. That's all right. Some bad people are in control of some bad things, and they're doing bad stuff. And we're going to fix it with magic. So, <laughs> yeah, this is where I had my collection, and... I was surprised to find the Doom Splitters tomb is uh, only 13.9 megabytes. Usually all my projects get huge, but I am managed to make this one a really nice size. So um, what I did was I took the player, the main player, Traviel Pine Dancer, um, and I have an AI Flace which is based on the Isabel companion mod for Doom. But I went in and, of course, replaced all the sounds and the graphics, and I tweaked a lot of the um, decorate, and I got rid of the ACS coding. So I hope that's allowed. I don't know how people are with copying code. I mean, everyone does it, so I have no idea what if that's going to be an issue, but we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when and if it comes. But she's in there for now, and she's called, um, I think, Flace Soul Hero 1. I originally had the wad called Happy Flace Day when I successfully replaced every single sprite and added in a whole bunch of new animations for Flace during the gameplay. So she does all these cool idle things and just random stuff to add some life and character and variety to the experience. So anyway, um, it's really cool that these were in a PK3 with the directory so everything was neatly organized and I could just go in and know right where everything was. Normally I would prefer to do things this way, of course always be as organized as possible. But if anybody were to uh, purchase Starhaven Balls of Plasma and uh, take a look at it in Slade, 
you're going to find a whole bunch of little wads. And I was always annoyed whenever I found PK3s like that, but that was absolutely necessary to uphold the structure of this file because of the amount of corrupted PK3s that you will be dealing with if you get up to about a gigabyte or larger. Actually, was this even a gig? I feel like it was 400 megs or, or 5 or 600. I don't remember. Let me look at this real quick. I don't even know. The latest bills of plasma was... Oh, 415 megabytes. That's weird because Slade didn't used to give me any problems with files that large. I would always have problems with files that were up to a gigabyte. You know, like we all downloaded Grezzo back in the day, I'm sure, to, to learn about all the different components in there and see what resources we could get out of it. Um, that one was like one, two gigabytes, if I remember. But, wow, okay, that's good, 414 megabytes. I like that size a lot. I think actually the finished one is like 600 because the music was separate. I put the music in a separate wad. You have to do things like that. You've got to save it in chunks. It's the only way. It's the only way when you're doing this stuff. I didn't know, but I learned it the hard way. That's the best way to learn it for sometimes when you do this stuff. Yeah, I saw on the forums people were saying, um, don't use that old program that I still actually use, and I love it. But you really shouldn't use it, because it is it does have its issues. What was it called? Slumped? Was it slumped? I don't, no, I don't even remember. It's in my Doom folder somewhere here, actually. Let me see. What was the name of that program you're not supposed to use? They, call, they consider it deprecated, for reasons I'm sure I'm not even fully aware of. What was the name of that editor? Slump or Wad et or something with a W? XWE. That, that was it. Yeah, XWE. Is this it? Yes. I absolutely love this app to this day. I'm not going to tell you why, but you should not use it <laughs> unless you know what you're doing, which is pretty easy to know what you're doing after a little bit, but uh, yeah. I will be archiving this forever on several USB drives, and I'm sure you can download it, but they say don't use it, but I use it. It does good things for me sometimes. <laughs> wow, I totally forgot Smile Thieves was in here. There's some kind of Smile Thieves. These were backgrounds for Smile Thieves. Huh, I was looking for that. That was a, a, a project I started a long time ago and didn't get around to. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I was wondering where these were. I'm missing tons of wads. They're hidden somewhere. This laptop and all these hard drives are like... They're like a jungle. You can seriously get lost and, and lose things in that jungle. So, if you've got some of your favorite wads, you better put it in the favorites folder. I think it's beautiful that, they, and that it could be that way. That's great. I think everyone who wants access to this kind of technology should have it. Alright, let's get back to the task here. Uh, did I get the sounds for the cultist? I think we did. Wait, no, that's the wrong file. This is Balls of Plasma Monster 7.wad. Um, and this basically contains all the monster replacements for Doom. This file is... let me see here. Back to the main Doom folder. I have several different Doom folders because it, it's all very organized. It may not look it, but it absolutely is. So, in case anything ever happens to me, um, if I get struck by lightning or a space train falls out of the sky and lands next to me and the shockwave kills me, then um, these videos, these kind of videos, will have documentation, hopefully, as to where and what everything is. In case, but that's probably nothing to worry about. For instance, here's Broleg 7.wad. This 19.2 megabyte file goes into the Balls of Plasma PK3, and this has the textures, the animated textures that you see on the screen, the flat screen TV, where the two characters are laughing at the um, clip from Broleg's. Cursed Doom Wads video where he covered my Civil War Doom Wad that I made and didn't take credit for. <laughs> for fun. 
I don't care if I ever get credit. It was just that was another small project. I actually did. I will be honest with you. I uploaded probably hundreds of these wads over the years, and never took credit for them. And that was under like 15 different Gmail accounts, which I don't have access to now any longer um, because they they don't like people doing that because it's like phishing. It's it has to do with people trying to get identity fraud and stupid shit like that. I never had any interest in anything like that. I don't know how to do anything like that. I made separate email accounts in college purely for fun to be able to send emails to myself and back things up. And, you know, down the line, it would help to have multiple accounts to use and situate. I don't think there's any problem with that. It doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't. If you're managing all those yourself and you had your folder with all your passwords, I think that's totally fine to do. Yeah, you can. It's not a crime at all. <laughs> People have several different accounts, but it was fun. It was fun, and it was perfect. Like I don't. I, I dropped all these little doom wads out there. No one will ever know they're from me. Who knows? N none of them, by the way. Absolutely none of the wads that I created had anything to do with racism. I just want to make that clear. None of that. No anti-Semitism. Nothing like that. Nothing. I made a lot of doom wads involving powerful angry women shooting other women I'll be honest about that that's a fictional thing that I, I like women versus women with guns and female heroes versus female demons and stuff just once in a while like an alternate universe gender role reversal but when it comes to anything to do with um, race racial discrimination of any kind racism I absolutely did not ever make anything like that just just put that on record and make that very clear I would never, of all the, th you know, there's lots of things here in this world, but that's, th that are ugly and gross and people are comfortable with, and that's something I just never was, so I don't, you know, because people made the Moon Man Doom mod, and I just think it's ugly, to be honest with you, like, I'm for free speech all the way, I'm 100% free speech, so if people really want to take the time to put a project like that together, and they feel compelled to do so then you know that's unfortunate but I'm gonna point and say I honestly have no interest in playing that wad ever I think it's very offensive I think it's ugly it's gross it's gratuitous and you know free speech if people want to play it if people want to make it if they want to support it over there I'm just gonna glare at you from here and go okay and then I'm gonna work on my own stuff and not worry about it because I appreciate free speech but it is not good, so just make that really, really clear. Yeah, I made a lot of weird Doom wads. I threw in all kinds of sprites and images, and who knows if they're even accessible to the public anyway. Because I'm sure they tagged me a long time ago and started making sure I wouldn't slip any secrets in about magic and spells and things like that that they don't want me to just, you know, divulge all over to the public. There's nothing like that in those Doom wads. They were purely just like empty silly and, and and none of them ever showed up on like Aquarius 199's channel by the way either so my doom wads are floating around out there however many I made that I never took credit for under several different email accounts <laughs> and I think that's funny they'll turn up one day a thousand years from now on some uh, alien cyborgs laptop I don't know so let me go back here. Balls of Plasma Monsters 7 is uh, 54.8 megabytes, which is not bad. It's pretty good. I went through and I kept downsizing the sprites. Uh, some of them are still really big. But let's see. This one is 106 by 185. And I want these, of course, to always be as high resolution as you can make them. Um with lots of detail. I like the detail. I like that being visible. But for the sake of performance, it is definitely there's a good balance where you want to go into Krita here and just resize, you know, or you can use um, one program I use to resize these is Format Factory because it's so fast and easy. You can just grab all your sprites from your, uh, from your Windows Explorer directory and just drag them in here and turn them all into PNGs of whatever size you want. And that's great. Uh, you do have to be careful because you'll get some inconsistencies if you don't do the measurements correctly. And then you'll have like, and, and this does happen for me because I'm one person putting all this stuff together. And there's a 
thousands of frames I'm working with, so there's going to be some inconsistencies when the whole final project is done, and I need to catch up on, you know, weeks of sleep lost, but uh, putting it together, you know, it's jagged at first, and then over time I want to add more smoothness and things. Um, but yeah, the, the, you'll see some frames in the animation where, like, the character turns or they go to the next frame and suddenly they're, like, this big. And that's, it's really, it's really stupid looking. It's really silly. And when you have so much, when you're, when you have so much going on, it's the kind of thing that you kind of sort of just, like, I'll get to that later. I'm not going to pay attention to that right now. I need to get the whole structure of this thing laid out, and then I'll come back and fix it later. But... Yeah, so we have this mummy here, and never mind the flickering green screen, that I have done everything to fix several times. I have downloaded the Microsoft uh, redistributable C++ 2022, whatever it is, thing. And I did that several times and restarted the computer, and this green flickering screen went away for a second, and then the computer restarted itself and it was happening again. So whatever's going on here, Windows keeps resetting itself. And maybe that has to do with why StreamYards isn't working. It could be. But I've tried everything with stream with Streamyards and live streaming. I have tried um, downloading that Microsoft C++ redistributable, and then you know you turn off everything, restart your computer. Yes, I did that. I turned it off completely and restarted it. Yes, I did that. Duh. All right. I just have a lot of computer problems. No one else has here. And um, I did that. well, okay. Flickering green screen. Funny. Haha. -ha. StreamYards doesn't work, haha. Yeah, I went down and, and messed with the advanced settings and the, and the um, what do you call it? The, IS, the ISP or whatever the fuck it's called. I don't even know at this point. My mind's focused on this. <clears throat> so yeah, these monsters here are a certain size, and some of them are still, I think, uh, sort of too big, like the... This uh, green zombie here, this green zombie zombie, I call them zombies. It sounds funny. And zombies are stupid. And we're sick of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. This one's still too big, I think. I would, I would downsize this one, but I didn't get around to it yet. So what we're doing today is I'm making a specific Doom Wad in this Star Haven theme, where we get to play as Traviel, and I have other characters. I'm gonna. I'm going to try to get implemented. I wanted to have Flace as a playable character um, and set up all these maps for like multiplayer so I could so I could have people like I'm going to send this out to some people. Uh, send it to some streamers that I know that play these and see if they want are interested. Oh, I might have to censor some shit in it though. <clears throat> There's some nudity. I guess I'll have to put like a little star over that or something, because these people, the way that they stream, they all follow the rules. It sucks. It's unfortunate. <clears throat> Everybody bent over and they were like, okay, okay, YouTube, I'll do what you say. It's unfortunate. I watched all oh, so many people just bow down, they just bent the knee. Never should have done that, never should have done that. But, oh well. Oh well, we're, we're going to work around it. So I'll put a little star over the nudity. There's not too much of it. It just happened to emerge in there to make the whole project what it was. But humans don't understand art. They don't understand aesthetic. They are, unfortunately, a very fucking traumatized utilitarian species. They might as well be headed for the Ugnaughts, you know? You don't want to become the Ugnaughts. That's disgusting. Actually, in the Star Wars wiki, I did read the Ugnaughts are supposed to be really smart and clever, so maybe I shouldn't say that. But they're considered like a, kind of almost like a, a slave class, or like um, it's almost like they're genetically engineered. I honestly found it really disturbing when I saw Star Wars: The Empire Strikes Back, and they have the <clears throat> Bespin Cloud City, and you have these little like troll things. I mean, I didn't read the wiki when I first saw the movie. I thought that's a little unsettling. Like, is that, like, some kind of underlying, like, Metropolis subplot you have going on here? Where Orlando Calrissian is running this utopian sci-fi city, and you have all these little, like, little gerbil people underneath? Like, but apparently they, they like their lives, according to this, the uh, lore that I read, so that's good. Maybe I should, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, Traviel player here, Reject. 
Regypt. We're going to Regypt. But I spelled Regypt wrong. It's spelled with two E's. Regypt is a fictional um, alternate universe you can go to through a portal. Where the whole planet is a desert planet and it's filled with monsters. And Egyptian architecture. And there's really no reason for any of it. Except that it looks cool. And that's it. There's no intended symbolism behind it, uh, and not in this case. And there is a lot of symbolism and things like that hidden here and there. But the fact that there's an Egyptian-themed map has nothing to do with any symbolism of any kind directed towards any groups or anything like that. It was just a, it was just a location, you know, like all video games have sewers, they say, or all video games have a volcano level or a forest. Well, there's your Egypt tomb. It's a fun thing to explore. We we've gone to Castle Wolfenstein and and uh, shattered some dusty mummies in Castle Wolfenstein. Returned to Castle Wolfenstein. We we sh we uh, beheaded some wrapped up mummies and time splitters in the tomb. I think we're about done. I think I'm done here. I think I did all the things that I had to do here to make this work. I deleted that. Grave Zimby, the green Zimby. And if that one looks familiar to anybody, I will admit, I pretty much directly copied its, uh, the whole art style of it, like deliberately for fun. I copied it from the concept art of the first um, sort of thick thug looking green zombie that you find in the PlayStation Medieval game for uh, Sony Computer Entertainment America's, what was it, 1999 that game came out, Medieval. They made a whole bunch of remakes I didn't play. Last Medieval game I ever played was the PSP version, and I thought it was really amazing. Uh, but I kind of wish they had made a sequel instead of a, a remake, just my humble opinion, but it was still cool. It was still good. So, in the PlayStation version, I don't know if I would ever get in trouble for doing something. I Probably not, because I completely hand-drew it. So it's like, who cares? It's not a, it's not like a trademarked Disney character. It's not like Mickey Mouse. It's this one little blurry. Um, how many polygons made up that thing? It was like a Lego almost back in the day, you know? That stupid zombie. It was fun. It was fun to kill. That thing was really fun to kill. The green blood would splash out, and you would hear that really satisfying, like cartoonish sound. It sounded almost like. You know the sound effects from uh, Charlie Brown when they get clobbered? If you ever watch the Peanuts show or the Charlie Brown show and they go... <laughs> or whatever it is. It was like that, but it was in like sort of a mid-level, twisted, edgy, gothic, dark, horror, macabre, brutal way. But it was still wacky and cartoonish at the same time. Very unique. There was nothing like it, really, that I had seen or heard. The combination of the sound effects and the and everything that went into it. So... Yeah, there's some sentimental value for that AI enemy there, and I couldn't help but just draw some frames and throw it in there. Um, it the that grave that grave zombie that cemetery zombie replaces one of the doom imps, um, and in this in the main balls of plasma, there's like five variations that you can get on enemies that replace the doom imp, and they all kind of behave similar to the Doom Imp, so they fit into that t that category, like they have sort of the same health, but they do have a little bit of variation. Like for instance, the Insetic Android or the robot, the shitty white metal robot, it's made of shitty white metal. It's cheap metal, that's why I, c I call it that. If you get killed by it, the obituary says, you got zapped by a shitty... Because <laughs> Alternate um, was cutting some corners. That was my That was my fan theory on the alternate Brotherhood of Science and the alternate um, robot army that they had. You know those robots you shoot in Time Splitters Future Perfect? Uh, I like to imagine they were like cut corners, like really cheap, you know, <clears throat> factory printed. We just need to churn out some soldiers here. So, <laughs> but yeah, he's gone. It, but that one, for example, would shoot like three blue plasma balls in a row. And originally, I had him just firing the uh, the Techno Spider or the Arachnotron uh, projectile. It just came out. But that was too difficult. It got really frustrating. I mean, when you're con when you, I was trying to keep this in like a very similar feel to the original Doom, as far as the timing and the flow and the way the gameplay works. And that was just 
that was just ridiculous. When you got too many of those imps and they were rapidly firing those fast plasma shots at you, it just it wasn't it wasn't as fun anymore. I could put it back for people that want more of a challenge, but in the main game it just wasn't working out. That's that's some advanced extra stuff that we do later if you really want to. That's like those advanced players you see on um, on Serious Sam where they make mods and then they make mods where the enemies are like 15,000 times more aggressive and they have more hit points and there's more of them. I downloaded a mod for uh, Serious Sam 3 before the first encounter um, where somebody allowed you to have a jetpack through the whole game and that was epic. I mean, yeah, obviously the the it it, it was sort of a a glitchy gimmick that wore off after maybe you know 15 minutes or so, um, and especially since whoever made this mod, apparently they they filled up all the levels with 90,000 more enemies than there originally were. So it it honestly didn't feel like a challenge. It just started to feel very tedious, and that was a just a mistake in my humble opinion. But it doesn't matter. It's just a mod for a game. But it was so amazing. I have the video footage. I think. I recorded, um, I was playing as this Final Fantasy character, just flying over all the cities, all the, all those places, getting to just fly anywhere that you could go. Yeah, there's PC gamers that they just no-clip around for fun, or they edit, but that was, a, that was a brand new, exciting experience for me. It was almost like the Truman Show, when he gets to look outside and see. <laughs> that kind of feeling. But not really. Much different. It has nothing to do with the Truman Show. Alright, <clears throat> so this is basically, this is going to be for Evil Egypt, and I can never remember what number of these Doomer board projects these are. I always forget, but I just copied and pasted it in here. Evil Egypt, it is the Doomer boards project number 23. Okay, 23. Um, now this is after I've done a whole lot of editing here this morning, so I'm assuming that I'm probably going to get some kind of an error or something won't work exactly right. There might be something I missed in the sound SND info file, um, or the decorate here. One of the monsters didn't get replaced. Well, we'll see. And I did remove the skies as well. There were some problems with the skies. In this file, I removed the skies. These smaller files, I, I removed the skies. They're 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 awesome looking. Oh no, wait, no, they're still here. Never mind. Whoops. Uh, they're still here. I am going to remove them because uh, I think there's a sky in these. In this, um, let me see here. Evil Egypt has its own unique sky, if I'm not mistaken. So here's the thing. I love doing this. I love playing other people's Doom wads when they're just a bunch of maps. And I, and I can do it with my own characters, my own weapons, and my own monsters. This is one thing I always, I'm very confused by is how many Doom players you see streaming and you see playing and recording um, all respect to them it's a little bit confusing to me how they can keep playing the same doom games like with the same enemies don't you get tired of that I mean for me the whole appeal of this entire uh, series this id software's doom and the source code being released the whole appeal of it is like infinite customizability which I argue is going to be one of the most important things to the gamer consumer market going forward and they probably are anticipating that which is why they're rolling out all the AI stuff they want to have the AI so you can customize and tailor everything about the gameplay experience which is good that's going to be a very good thing and when you get to whatever year we get to in centuries from now or whatever and they've used AI artificial intelligence so you can say like hey I want to play Star Wars Dark Forces but you're going to be able to put this game into this and the AI is going to scan it and you're going to say, hey, I want you to change this and this and this and this and that. I want you to replace all the stormtroopers with Barney the Dinosaur. And I want to use a baseball bat instead of a lightsaber. Or, or I don't know, that's a really stupid idea, actually. That is really dumb. Why did I say that? It's a hypothetical example, and you won't have to do any programming here. You won't have to do any coding. You'll just say to this big, you, you just walk down in the park, and there will be a big, giant, shiny, circular thing that looks like a D-Wave quantum computer and it'll say, hey, how can I help you today? And you'll hold up this copy of Star Wars Dark Forces and you'll say, hey, can you can you change this and make it cool for me? 
I have a list here of things I want to be different about it, and it'll say, sure, go ahead. And that's the future of gaming, in my, I, I believe, for sure. Infinite full customizability. People are going to look back on this era as an absolute dark ages. What we had these, we had these little encrypted, like sealed games that were just made as they were by the corporations and by by groups of people that had elite access to exclusive technology, and they got to put these things together, and then the games are hard coded on the disc that way, or they were, until everything started being you know digitally. Hey, I'm being I'm I'm having positive thoughts about it. I think it's a good thing. I think there's a lot of good things going on in the media entertainment world. It's unfortunate we live in a world with corruption and there's bad people that misuse media and censor it and prevent things from getting out. That's very unfortunate. You know, but uh, things are still happening, progress is still happening, history will still be history, it'll still be a thing. If that makes any sense. Do what you can with what you have where you are. Let's try this out. Let's see how it worked. Oh, wait. There was one more thing I had to do. I forgot. So I'm going to delete these skies. I don't know if there's a sky in there or not. Let's see. There probably is. If there isn't, I'm going to make one right now. Yeah, there is. See? They have some Egypt theme. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, when, you, when I do this, um, I try to preserve as much of the original wad as possible, you know, for respect and everything. Uh, give credit where it's due. It, you can run into conflicts if and when you load Starhaven, any of my Starhaven Doom mods with, uh, you know, Doomer board projects or other... Especially, you know, Doomer board projects, they have a few, like, fantasy-themed mods where they, they replaced all the sprites of all the enemies and everything with, like, a rogue fantasy... Some, some guy with a bow and arrow. So in that case, you know, that wouldn't really be compatible. You can do it. It would load, it would function, it would probably play, but it's not really recommended, and I wouldn't really maybe recommend streaming it either because the, the I don't know how the I don't know how the wad authors would feel if they would be offended or not appreciate it, and in that case I would respect it, you know. But if it comes to you wanting to play your customized mod in their map set, there's certainly nothing wrong with that in the first place. <coughs> And that's what we're doing here today. So yeah, we got skies. Now what I was going to do was, and people might think I'm weird and crazy for this, oh well. But I am going to do this. I'm going to take the uh, damage factor, or not the damage factor, the blood, <clears throat> the blood type for this enemy here. There was none. But if you type no blood in GZ Doom you'll get a dust puff that puffs off the enemy, which is neat, and it's cool to see. But in Time Splitters, the first Time Splitters, <laughs> it's funny, there was absolutely no hit detection at all whatsoever <clears throat> on your enemies when you shot them with the tracer, the projectile, other than, you know, they would jolt a little bit, and you would hear them make that hit noise, and you would hear the <clears throat> impact noise. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there, it, I just thought it was funny because when I first played, it didn't didn't really bother me. I didn't notice because at the time, the leap in technology was so fierce and so fast, and the whole game itself was so immediately impressive in all ways at once. From the moment I saw the trailer at E3, like I was watching, um, I was watching uh, X. Was it? X, it was Gamespot back in the day, I think. Right, Gamespot, when they showed those first few uh, clips of Time Splitters. The little trailer with the with Harry Tipper running back and forth and the robots and stuff. Like I was just watching trailers, binge watching trailers, and then I saw that one came on and I just lit up like, whoa! I know that one's gonna be something. There's just something in there. There's some magic energy in there. I could just tell right away. I knew it right away. So, um, it it never bothered me that there was no blood and there was no impact. It would have been cool. It would have been neat, but. It, it was somehow perfect at the time. It was just perfect. Everything that, that put it together, the whole experience of it, with all the imperfections, it was perfect, you know? Because it was just such a... such a passion project. It was fun. Alright, so we're gonna make a new blood type, <clears throat> and I'm just gonna call it TS1 blood, because there's nothing <laughs> in it. 
blood type, TS1 blood. Now, if you type no blood, like I said, you'll, when you shoot this enemy, you'll see a dust puff fly off. But if you type a new blood type, and you'll have to make an actor for it. <clears throat> so let me go over here to Doom Miscellaneous. This that I have open is the GZ Doom uh, PK3, which comes with any GZ Doom port that you download. So if you download the zip file for GZ Doom, whatever it is, 412, 410, you know, 306, whatever you're running with, um, there's that little PK3 in there. And they have all the defaults for the actors, so you can look them up. I am in the, uh, where are we here? Zscript folder. So I just opened up GZ Doom by dragging it in and then go to this Zscript folder here, actors, and then Doom. And I don't, I personally do not know hardly anything at all about any of this other stuff. <laughs> Strife. Um, shared, you know, I know a little bit about that, but ooh, here's the blood. So the blood is actually in the shared folder. I was about to go into the miscellaneous. Whoops, my bad. Oh wait, is this right? Let me see. Actually, I, actually, I forget. Doom miscellaneous, miscellaneous. Where are we? I just saw it there. That's where the explosive barrel is, but not the blood. All right, that's right. It's in the shared folder. Okay. Uh, so I just like to do it this way. This way works for me because I'm not a. I don't have coding things memorized. So I just like to copy templates from the default. I, I'm sure it's a pretty common thing that people do. Yeah. You know? So now I'm gonna paste this new blood actor right here. Uh. And the first thing that we do, of course, is hit Control F, and then in your find what you want to type the semicolon, because this is Z script over here in this GZ Doom PK3. These things are all written in Z script. That's why it says class blood actor instead of uh, actor colon or whatever, which is a lot lot simpler. And and I should learn to use GZ or uh, Z script. I should learn more about it. But it's just one of those things that the days just keep ending, and I just keep running as fast as I can, and I just never get to it yet. So, but I love Zscript; it's awesome. I would love to learn more about it. Uh, anyway, let's go back over here. You do not want semicolons in your decorate file, so if you just hit replace all, that will instantly erase all your semicolons, which is an awesome thing to do. Of course, you want to get rid of this right here. This doesn't fit into uh, decorate stuff change this to actor blood um, but now okay so we're gonna call this actor TS1 blood colon blood and it does not replace anything it's just, it's its own blood so get rid of this closing bracket here of course and all we're going to do is replace this BLUD with TNT1 and this CBA with three A's because there's just TNT one. All that's going to do is make it a completely null, empty, nothing. So there won't be any sprites, and that's what we want. And I think if you hit spray, you can just go stop. It won't spray. Uh, if you just, I could just comment these out like this and just hit stop, and I think that would be it. But I think that works. I, that's all I'm going to do. I was going to put a TNT in there, but um, just say stop. It won't do anything because we don't want anything split. This is for nostalgia purposes. Honoring the beauty of the technical limitations that were overcome in the most efficient and organic way, in the most balanced way. That is the first Time Splitters project. The first Time Splitters game, it was a an absolutely wonderful, brilliant, successful work of art, I believe, how it came together. And of course, of course, of course, the big corporations didn't like it, as usual. Isn't that interesting how often they do that? Isn't that interesting how often these money makers, they just don't know what the public wants. They just don't know what's exciting. Or, 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 or maybe they think they want people to think that what they're giving them is what they want in some cases for the purposes of social engineering maybe that's ridiculous 
That's a completely ridiculous conspiracy theory. Just shut up. Why would you even say that? <laughs> How silly. Alright, let's see if this works. Did we get everything? Let's try it. Alright, so here's Evil Egypt right here. And I know there's people with um, mod launchers. You know, for some reason, I just like to do it this way. I like individually selecting mods with my mouse and control clicking and putting them in. Most people, and especially like you know newcomers to Doom, probably won't be doing that kind of thing, or won't know how to do it. Maybe. So I, I you know, I would make sure everything is in one wad so you can just double click on it or do whatever they do but I do this all the time man I mix wads and I load like five of them at once it's a wonderful thing to do hey where did this hey wait a minute let me go back sort by date what the oh here it is okay so here's Trav Player Regypt I'm gonna load my uh where is she? Happy Place Day 6.3. It's kind of the most recent one. The thing is with this PK3 here, I didn't release this as it is. I don't think I can. I don't think I would be allowed to. I'm pretty sure what I did was totally legal and allowed to be done. Um, like I said, I took this Isabel Companion mod which had a lot of code that was of course copied from other wads before it because this is a community building project. Like, people figure something out, they, they, they fix the code a certain way, it's like, hey, this works really well, it's efficient, it, it's, po you know, we have the right keywords that weren't on the wiki or were, known, were not in any tutorials, but people can learn from it, you can reverse engineer these wads, it's really awesome. I've learned a lot from re reverse engineering and understanding how they, they work. Tutorials are just not, like, they're, they're out there, but they disappear, and they don't, always know that it's just it's strange tutorials are not always reliable sometimes the best way is to be self-taught and just dive in just take it apart but um, there is an ACS script inside of this former Isabel companion PK3 which is now happy place day and uh, the the ACS will spawn will spawn this companion all the time next to the player I don't really understand how it works I don't know anything about ACS coding and how that shit works, sorry. So I just got rid of it. This one is still here, but that's the kind of thing that, if I'm not mistaken, would get me in trouble if I tried to market this on itch.io, which I did. So if there's any problem with any of this, if this is considered plagiarism, what I did with um, this file over here, Flace Soul Hero, or whatever it is, then please let me know. Because I did a lot of careful research into how that works, and it's, you know, like I got rid of a lot of the licenses and things in the GZ Doom, um, so I hope I did it right. Please let me know, someone. Anyway, yeah, here it is, Place Soul Hero. So we have, uh, where is it here? Evil Egypt. Let's give it a try and see how it runs. Where's my GZ Doom? Oop, ah. Oh. Shoot. And I have to select it again. Probably what I should do is put this stuff all in its own folder, but I'm not going to do that. Where was I? Fuck global warming. That's one of my favorites. Alright, Evil Egypt. Uh, it's not usually this disorganized either. There's been a lot of stuff going on. Um... Alright, where's my happy place day? It should be right here. Where are you? 6.2. Here she is. Okay, I'm gonna find it. Alright, let's see how it runs. There's the EXE we loaded it up to. Full screen? It does make it run a little faster. Like the frame rate I've noticed goes way up. Ah, I knew it. So we got line 212. I 
Yeah, I replaced uh, the chain gunner with the scourge splitter. My own fan art hand drawn version of the scourge splitter. Let's see here, player 212. <coughs> Wait, that's the wrong file. This one. Ah, I forgot the number. Alright, in the chain gunner, what's the number for that particular frame? <coughs> The chain gunner's in the possessed. Alright. Just one. A C P O S three fire. It's just one one frame. Alright. One. That should fix it. Little things like that are easy to forget, so much gratitude for the developers for the way they uh, set up these error windows. I know it's probably common sense. They're like, yeah, that's just common sense. We just take for granted that we're just like that. But I really appreciate it that it's done this way. I really appreciate it. It's awesome. They give you this list. They tell you right where the line is. So let's restart it. Now it works. Do you have any music? I don't think we have any music. Huh. Started. Okay. Oh, there is music. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, I think we forgot the sounds there somewhere, because he didn't make the sound he was supposed to make. But that's alright. We're just testing it. Yeah. down here is a mess. It's weird. Once you've got some of these... Oh. I'm gonna have you wait here. <laughs> God, that laugh. Let me make sure the audio is still good. I've gotta find some tampons. I'll keep an eye out for you. See, they just stand there. <laughs> Look at how messy that is. That was drawn completely in sketch. And I drew it in sketch at the exact size of the original sprites. So that's why it looks like that. This is for the smaller version, like I said. Instead of having all the, uh, you know, okay. Shh. Oh, oh, shit. That's what I was trying to avoid. Yeah, you gotta be uh, stealthy, quiet down here, because this place is weird. See how they... Okay. I was trying to get the switch, but I didn't get it. Okay. Two out of three. You gotta hit all the switches. That was a Star Wars noise. How the hell is that in there? Oh! We need human freedom for the future! 
I've got to find some tampons. There we go. There's the switch. The last one. What was that? I'm hoping we get some of those mummies here in a minute. See how they turned out. There it is. Here we got the ceiling coming down. <laughs> Did you guess? So we're missing some sounds and we're also missing this lanky pumpkin monster. How strange, I thought it was in there. Oh well. We'll just copy it again. The lanky pumpkin replaces the arch vial. <laughs> so I need to put in sound effects for uh, this chain. 